I'm a, a dermato general dermatologist with a special interest in clinical trials, so clinical trialist. And uh, I've been working with Riflumalast topically since the phase one program uh, that was done a number of years ago. So I've been through phase one through to phase three in both the cream and the foam products and both strengths for AD and psoriasis. Uh, what I think one of the major um, benefits of a product like Reflum Last Foam is the fact that it can be applied in hair bearing areas as well as non hair bearing areas. So you can have one product for scalp and body psoriasis. Um, it's once a day, it's well tolerated. One thing I, I didn't mention is the, the tolerability, more than 95% of, of patients reported uh, good tolerability. And um, the, the adverse effect profile was no different than the vehicle foam profile. So nothing new that we found with using Reflum Last as a cream. Uh, but for, for patients, from the patient perspective, it's convenient. It's once a day. It's non-greasy, so it's aesthetically pleasing, which is also really an important um, feature for patients who are you know, putting something all over their body and then getting dressed and going to work or whatever, getting into their sheets at, at bedtime. So having a non-greasy product that's once a day that's as effective or more effective than, than currently available uh, products, I think really um, will, will make a difference for patients with psoriasis, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, whether they're using it as monotherapy or if it's um, used as in combination therapy with systemic agent, which is often where we use topicals as well. I guess they do their analysis and then and then we'll we'll give their approval. In the meantime, we do have the cream product that's available for body psoriasis. You know, I do actually have some patients apply it to the scalp because we don't have the the scalp approved for that yet. Um, but in the United States, there is also the the foam that's approved for seborrheic dermatitis. So some patients who have uh, psoriasis may also have seborrheic dermatitis and may have this product, so they may already be using it. Um, but to, to have it available to a wider range of patients, I think, is really the next step. And then typically after a product gets approved, then we get the real world evidence about how is it working in the real world as opposed to how we saw it working in the controlled clinical trial environment. 